Hello YouTube. This is Coco Noel here. I've been a busy girl. Um, as my song, my theme song for the day, Time to Change, Time to Rearrange, popped up in my head. I thought, you know, I do need to do some home maintenance and clean out my spice drawers and organize them. They say we should empty and replace every six months. I can't say I'm the best at that because if they still smell viable and they're whole, um, I hang on to them a little bit longer probably than I should, but um, sorry, a bit frugal that way. But anyway, I don't know if anyone has ever seen an uh, Indian spice box. I was gifted this by my employer's mom because I'm just so enamored with Indian cooking and they're vegetarian and I've learned so much from them. But this box comes in three parts. If you're looking for an alternative to plastic, I know it's hard to get away from it. It has a little tray and a lid and it's pretty much mouse proof. So for those of you homesteading and prepping, it's very valuable. Um, <clears throat> I have had a difficult time with mice here in these super deep drawers where we're renting here. In fact, somewhere Mickey decided to take a nibble and said, Oh, too spicy. No, thank you. But I want to show you this is sambar powder. 34 cents. You can't beat the prices at an Indian store. We went down the aisle. And I'm blown away by how much things are. And if you go into an Indian store, it's like a fraction of the cost and you get so much more. But, you know, then you're burdened with having to use it all. But let me go through this for you. Um, typically, Indians like to grind their own powder. So they'll leave the spice or herb in its whole form and then grind it fresh. And get rid of an ant there. <laughs> so anyway, this is cumin and also known as jira. This is coriander. Sometimes they'll blind, uh, bind, sorry, grind the two of those together. And so I save any old grinder jars to do that. And you can just grind it fresh, which is awesome. You're probably more familiar with yellow mustard seed. These are black mustard seeds. And this is called fenugreek seed, but you also may know it as methi or uh, fenugreek in season, typically winter, uh, kind of resembles a purslane stem, kind of a succulent stem, and it has a little shamrock leaf. Very beneficial for female health, nursing mothers, etc. I'm sure it benefits to the men somewhere along the line. Here's some whole cinnamon stick, cloves, cardamom. This is called urid dal, and it's like uh, black lentils without the skin. And it's extremely mellow, gentle, great way to get protein on your tummy for anyone who's convalescing. Quick to cook. But um, when Indians cook, they do something called tempering or a tadka. And they start with oil in the pan, get it warm. Then they drop in these spices and they get them to bloom. And the oils are released into the food, into the air. In fact, mustard seed will pop like little popcorn. So some of these spices will come with um, a spoon like this. And <laughs> it's a little hard to control. Mustard seeds like to fly off of the shallow. There's really no bowl to that spoon. So I've been using this cute little hand-turned spoon. My mom bought at Sturbridge Village. Look at the detail on that. When we were kids, um, it's a colonial village where they reenact colonial days. But anyway, there's a nice job of corralling those little mustard seeds. And so anyway, with a dubba, you just put your lid on top and it's beautiful storage. I'm so blessed to have that gift. And in the meantime, I've got this really deep drawer that I'm backfilling. So I've got cloves here in the hole, cardamom. Um, I also recommend these spice jars. I know that they're mostly glass. A lot of us trying to get away from plastic. And um, they have a little plastic lid that goes on the inside of this lid. I'm trying to figure out where I put it. Anyway, um, you can't get away from plastic altogether. But these are fabulous because not only are they mouse proof, you can see at a glance what is in them. They're shallow enough to clear this drawer. So anyway, I've got a lot of stuff. Here is allspice. And I need to uh, grind my own powder. Um, this is a mango powder. I'm probably going to ditch this. You 
see it's changing colors. I always look for any sort of worm or insect activity. There's nothing going on here. But I just had it so long. And what you'll find with Indian supplies is you get an awful lot in your bag. And so it's a bit of a burden to try to use it all up. But my employer just simply wraps it with a um, rubber band. And she keeps it in the freezer. So it looks like I have a double of Kalanji. If you've never had Kalanji, we grow it as a flower, love in a mist, but it's also known as black onion seed. It doesn't really impart an onion flavor, but I can't describe it. It's better than a poppy seed. And I've got this recipe that uses it, and it's just fantastic. So I'm gonna make that recipe soon. Um, let me see if I can give you an example of something oh this is something different you may have not seen this is black salt it has a bit of a sulfurous smell and indians make something called raita which is similar to the tzatziki sauce in greek cuisine yogurt sour cream you add a little bit of ground uh this is coriander this is coriander you add ground cumin called jira and a little pinch of this black salt and they typically use cucumber, but I haven't seen it used with too many other vegetables. Some of the Indian folks might add shredded carrot. So let's see, I've got whole cinnamon. Um, let's see, this is the Indian version of chili powder. It is different than our chili powder. In fact, there's so many variations of chili powder. It depends if it's a smoked chili, what chili they use, was it fruity? So anyway, this I think has a bit more heat than our American uh, version. Now here is something kind of exotic most folks haven't heard of. Extremely pungent. So I only have that open a crack, right? You can smell this like a mile away. Um, reminds me of heliotrope root. You know, uh, whew, so strong. But when you add a pinch of this to your food, it just awakens the flavors. And it's also known as hing, but apparently back in the day, our colonists used asafoetida and it was helpful for warding off uh, cold, flu, whatever ailments they used it. Sometimes they would even tie it around their neck. So when I tell you this is pungent, can you imagine wearing that around your neck at school? <laughs> so let's see, something I'm going to be replacing is this tamarind powder or tamarind paste. You leave it in the drawer. A little dab just uh, perks up your food. It, it's kind of a a little tangy. I would say even similar to a green tomato tang. But look what my husband brought me. This sucker's huge. I don't know how I'm going to get through that. Let's look at the difference. It's not going to fit in my drawer. But just an example for pricing. A tamarind piece was $4.99. And um, what they've done is, it's a concentrate. They've taken all the goodies out of the tamarind pod, scraped it into a paste, and it's extremely concentrated. So you put a little dollop of this in with your curries and add water, and you're good to go. This is really good with uh, samosas, too. So let's see, what else do I have going on here? I uh, spent some time growing Marzano, San Marzano tomatoes one summer. And I just found this. It's my remnants. It still smells a little fresh. But um, I dehydrated those into coins. Then I ground it as a powder. So I had a tomato powder. And this was really good. Added with garlic and Parmesan onto popcorn. So you had like a pizza flavored popcorn. Very good. And then, of course, red pepper flake. So let's see. What else do we have here? I've got garlic karam. This was only 34 cents. Uh, my employer and I went into Williams and Sonoma, took an Indian cooking class, and we just laughed at the prices. They had these little cooking kits where you get a little bit of spice, a little bit of sauce, $12. We just thought people don't realize what you can get at the Indian store. So anyway, my friend Lena, she ground some delicious sambar powder, which is like a form of a soup when you add certain vegetables. I can't get rid of this. This is the last of Lena who moved. Um, and so what I did is I transferred some of that into here so it's easier to access. 
of course, turmeric is a big dang deal in Indian cooking. And of course, we Americans are recognizing the value of it for its anti-inflammatory properties. And I'm sure by now most of you know, if you have turmeric and you want the full benefit of it, you have to have the ground black pepper in tandem with it. So let's see, what else? Um, been such a good girl. Look at all my spices. So this urid doll I need to replace and get that in my double. But I wanted to show you there's so many different lentils in Indian cooking. This is moong dal, chana dal, and so it'll tell you it's a split chickpea, a uh, split moong bean, it's tiny yellow. They start to look alike. So what I did is I just simply repackaged my bags in these and put the label on the outside. This one's pretty self-explanatory. And um, I'm going to pour it in here, but if you've never upcycled something, uh, consider keeping a mason jar that fits your Parmesan lids because it's so handy. You put that in there, you can sprinkle, and you can scoop large amounts. So I'm going to transfer some uridol in that later. And let's see, what else? I think that's it for now. Um, I just want to invite you, if you like this uh, particular little video or vlog, I'm going to be doing some more vegetarian cooking with these spices, introducing you to some recipes I've been introduced to. And I'm going to see if I can turn this around here. Hi! Um, if, if you like this particular cooking, the Indian cooking, I think I'm going to start a playlist called Gringo Cooking, uh, a white girl appropriating other ethnicities, uh, whether it's the Indian cooking or Hispanic cooking. I worked in a German brow house, introduced to some family recipes there. Don't do too much of that because that's a lot of heavy fats. But um, yeah, I've been trying to just trying to introduce more vegetarian cooking in my weight loss journey here. So, if you would like to come along for the ride, please uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a little bell next to it, and it will notify you if I have something in the playlist. And if you like this particular video, please give a thumbs up. Any sort of activity like that, comments, helps to establish me in the YouTube community. And YouTube takes note and gives me stats weekly, so it's kind of fun to get updated. And I, I will be improving my videos as we go. We're having all sorts of glitches with our devices this week. So my apologies for any rough editing or or weird things going on. <laughs> but hey, that's life. So anyway, happy YouTubing. Signing out here. Coco Noel. And please like and subscribe to me if you would. Thank you so much.